Hello class, in this lesson we're going to be applying what we learned about equilateral triangles in the previous lesson. So what we want to do here is we want to draw three triangles that are all equilateral. First and second have to share a side and the second and third have to share a side. Uh, so what I want you to do is I want you, as I'm doing the construction, I want you to write down the steps in your own words that I'm performing. Uh, you know, be, be precise. You want it so it's in your notes so that if you did it yourself, following your notes, you would get the same picture I get, or a correct picture at the very least. Um, and then I'll show you the notes from the book uh, with their steps. Not necessarily, you know, just because you're different doesn't mean they're wrong. Uh, they're just different as long as uh, you follow the correct process. So first thing you got to do is we got to draw a segment. So I drew segment AB here. And we're going to use that length for all of our uh, triangle sides. So we want to make an equilateral triangle, just like that cat problem. Put the pointy end on A and the pencil on B, and draw a circle. And we're going to do the exact same thing Sorry, over at B. So there we have. Two circles, same radius. Make sure you make them dashed. Right. Um, what might be easiest is drawing the circles and then erasing uh, parts of it so it looks dashed. You can try to dash it if you're using a compass and picking a pencil up and putting it down, but that can get messy. So we want two triangles touching. Well, we've got two points here uh, where they intersect, so that gives us two triangles. Let's just keep going with the alphabet column C and D. But we need three triangles. Well, we're going to use this length again, so we can't change our bigger compasses. We already put it on A and B. So let's put it on one of the other points. Let's put it on C. You could put it on D and you'd get a correct picture. I just chose C. So now we. Draw one there, and let's make that dashed. And see, so we need three triangles, so we just need one more point. So I'm going to label the point over here on the left. I'll call that point E. And now if we connect what we have, we will have three equilateral triangles. So all the segments that I just drew in are all radii of those circles that all of the same radius. So these are all equilateral triangles. And hopefully you got your steps written down. And here are the steps from the book. Uh, yeah. You know, you, I, don't, I don't really like how short they wrote this. I would write this out as a complete sentence. I would say draw circle A with center A and radius AB. But e either is fine. Uh, no, A, B, and B, A are the same. It's a segment length, so you can just flip the letters. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the gist of it. Uh, hopefully you have something similar to that. Now for the next construction, we want to make a regular hexagon. Hexagon has six sides. And it has to be regular, so that means all the sides have to be congruent. Well, we only know about triangles so far, but if you look back at what we did before, that kind of hide these circles. Looks like we were on the way to getting a hexagon, doesn't it? Looks like we have half of one right here. So it turns out that to make the regular hexagon, we're just going to uh, make more circles so that it, it kind of looks like a, a flower when you have the circles in there. Um, so you got to put it on your center first. So we're going to use center K. So we're going to make sure that all of the triangles that we draw all have K as one of uh, the vertices. So the, the hexagon is kind of going to kind of go around K in the circle. So I drew down, I drew K down, and just uh, draw a circle centered there with any radius. 
So I just put a point down over here, and that's going to basically uh, mark our radius. So there we are. And I'm going to call that point A. All right, well, we need uh, another point. So let's go over to A like we did before. And let's draw another circle. All right, and we want to continue this process going around. Let's see. I want to label this one B. I want to go A, B, C, D, E, F. So uh, when you're lettering things in geometry, you have to be consistent, or you, you don't have to. You should be consistent with your, your letter order. You almost always want to go in alphabetical order. Uh, so if that's B, by the time I get around here, that's going to be point F. So we'll make this F down there. Now I want to draw another circle. I'm going to center this one over at B. And it's going to go through K like we wanted. And we're going to just continue this process. Um, I'm going to label them. Uh, in mathematics, when you repeat a process many times, you don't have to basically repeat yourself with different letters each time. You can say continue this process until you know we, we've exhausted all the points, something like that. So I'm going to keep going around. I'm going to label these eventually. Yeah, and then we get here, and we don't really need that one, do we? I'll keep doing it so it looks like that flower I said. <laughs> so there you have it. Let's get a little sand dollar in the middle or something. So uh, let's label those points. So here we have C. Here we're going to have D, E, and F. And it's not a little bit off on these. If you draw your points big enough, you can kind of hide any minor mistakes you might have made. That's something a college professor uh, told me was OK. If you miss your mark by a little bit, just draw your point bigger. <laughs> so there you go. So if you look at those points on the outer edge, oh, let's dash all of these too. All right, so if you look at all the uh, letters from A through F, and we connect them, we will get that regular hexagon we were looking for. Because each of the sides of the hexagon is a side of an equilateral triangle. We know all the triangles that we drew or constructed have the same side lengths. And so I'm going to hide most of these circles so you can see there we go. That looks a lot more like a hexagon. And here are the steps. So uh, if you notice, step seven is that one that I mentioned where they basically say just continue this process until we, we go back to the beginning. So that's OK to say. As, lo as long as it's a clear pattern, uh, that's, that's a correct thing to say. But it doesn't make sense to keep repeating yourself. So let me put that back for you so you can see that along with the steps. And I'll zoom out a little bit. And our last question of the video, could you keep doing this process to make hexagons all over your sheet? Yeah, no reason why not. Uh, that's actually something called uh, hexagonal tessellation or hexagonal tiling. We look at a picture here. You know, it looks like tiling you might see on a floor somewhere. And if you drew it on your paper, well, it doesn't line up perfectly uh, on the edges. So the edges of it are going to uh, be cut off. But you, you can just do the pattern over the entire thing. 
So the regular uh, hexagon is one of the few shapes that tessellates. So in this lesson, we learned a few new applications of equilateral triangles. Thanks for watching the video.